Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Secret Origins of Mint Condition. I am one of your hosts, James, and with me is Joe. Hello, folks. And Chris. Hi there. And happy May the 4th, everybody. Happy Star Wars Day. Mm. And uh, because it's May the 4th, because of Star Wars Day, we're going to be talking all things Star Wars. So to do that, we have uh, a returning guest, friend of the show, and host of Trash Compactor, a Star Wars podcast, which officially launches its season one debut today. Josh Bernhardt is here. Hello there. Thank you for coming on, Josh. We really appreciate you being on, especially when we're talking all things Star Wars. So um, we're really excited to have you on today. I'm excited to be here. I've been looking forward to this podcast for uh, months, I think you could say. Yes, I've been, we've been teasing this for a while. Um, <laughs> Joe, did you have something you wanted to add it into? Oh, uh, no, no. I just wanted to say hi. Thanks for being here, Josh. So we really appreciate it. <laughs> no, I'm I'm really... I said it twice. I'll say it again. I'm really excited to be here. I'm looking forward to this one. Cool. Excellent. Well, so I'll give you a little history before we launch officially into the podcast because, um, you know, I would say the topic that I, I put forth today for this uh, Star Wars episode would, would be the original podcast topic, uh, even before I, I decided I wanted to do a podcast and even before I, I, I approached Joe and Chris about doing the podcast. So I just I give a little back history on, on this is our topic is going to be centering around Darth Vader and I'll we'll get into the more specifics around it. But as Josh has said, like um, when he first met me, I, I, he saw me wearing a Darth Vader shirt in mint condition uh, Darth Vader growing up, I, I really liked the character. And, you know, thinking about approaching this episode and the character of Darth Vader, um, I kind of, you know, this is my adult version of why I thought that way. But I guess in my mind, I liked Darth Vader because the, you know, the last impression you ever have of something sometimes is what's left with you. And the last impression I have of Darth Vader with the original trilogy is that he kills the Emperor um, which returns to the good side and ends up a force ghost at the end of return of the Jedi. So in my mind, all the things that we'd seen in a new hope and empire, I guess for my young mind, liking the character were kind of a race because in the end he, he, he was a good guy. So I guess that I, that's my justification now as an adult, I, I can't go back in time and, and figure out any other way. So there, there could be differences in that, uh, in my younger self, but so I had that going for a while. And then the prequels come out and the prequels, um, number one is not what Anakin, I thought Anakin would be uh, as a starter, uh, but that's a whole separate podcast, I think. Mm. And um, and then when we get to Revenge of the Sith, Anakin Skywalker, now Darth Vader, really crosses the line and, and murders, as we joked about, um, younglings. But it's really in the Star Wars universe, that's not a joke. He literally kills, at, I think, at least 10 to 20 young Jedis, if not more. I don't mm -hmm. even know if we know the count, but he kills a whole bunch of young children in his efforts to uh, fulfill his role as Darth Vader and, and be the Emperor's uh, right hand. So all of that, like, and the prequels, we could, again, a whole other podcast topic about what the prequels are. The prequels kind of, like, I wouldn't say ruined Star Wars for me, but I took a break from Star Wars for a long time. But, um, but as, I, as Disney started re-promoting Star Wars and I was into the expanded trilogy, I got back into it. And I started rethinking my thoughts about the character Darth Vader. Uh, obviously, it's one whole saga. So episodes one through three to, you know, uh, you know four uh, through six all count. So my like, liking this character as I grew up changed into like, this is a really bad guy. I mean, what we saw on screen him do in Revenge of the Sith and everything else and if you're a person like me who reads like the in canon Marvel comics and stuff that Marvel started to do once they acquired it, he's done terrible thing, you know, hunted down and killed rebels and Jedis and that. So my real question for this episode, and, uh, you know, Chris and I talked about this. This is like Chris has mentioned on previous podcast. This was the topic that rekindled our friendship after like 16 yeah. years. I, <laughs> it spanned I to... multiple com phone conversations. Yes, it did. Yes, this was a long philosophical topic. And I've discussed this with Josh as well many times. Um, so this is the podcast to finally have our thoughts out. And Joe, I have not discussed this podcast topic with you, but, um, I'm really interested in your thoughts. So the, the conversation is at the end of return of the Jedi, Anakin Skywalker appears as a force ghost, mm -hmm. which kind of implies to you that all is forgiven with the force, I guess, cause he's there with Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda. And if you watch clone wars and rebels, you know, Qui-Gon, is not there in the scene, but he's also attained that. So it means like you, to be a force ghost, you've attained a certain amount of enlightenment and balance or whatever peace with the force. And, and it seems like all is forgiven. So I, I have to ask, and, and Joe, since I have not talked about this with you, I'll have you go first. 
does is Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader worthy of that redemption at the end of Return of the Jedi? I'm still wrestling with this, James. I know this is going to be the question, and I've been thinking about it and thinking about it. And uh, maybe by the end of this podcast, I might be able to answer that question uh, in affirmative one way or the other. But uh, right now, I would have to say I'm leaning towards no, because That's... of all the all the all the things you just uh, uh, enumerated. Um, but that said, you know uh, he's he's you know when you talk about cinema villains, when you talk about the greatest villains in cinema history, of course, Darth Vader is one of them. I mean, he's right up there with Hannibal Lecter. Um, Nurse Ratched, Mrs. Danvers from Rebecca, which is an incredible villainous, uh, Michael Corleone. So he's, and they all, you know, and some, you know, some of them, uh, we, we talk about, uh, especially Corleone, is, is, he, is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? Does he redeem himself at the end? But he loses everything, he loses his family, but he kills all his enemies. So uh, this is a great, um, a great question you have posed. And uh, I'm going to sit back for a bit and, and, and listen to, uh, the other answers from uh, you and uh, jo- Josh and Chris, and maybe you'll push me in the other direction. Maybe you won't, but okay. um, that's where I stand right now. I'm uh, I'm straddling a line right now. I, I, I like this. I, I, oh, and like another great villain, and Chris will appreciate this. Um, I hope I get this right. Uh, the vacillating Richard was that Richard the second, Richard the third, uh, Chris. Ooh, I honestly couldn't tell you offhand. But uh, that's the that's the premise of that play is because you can never make up his mind, you know. So uh, they you know they're constantly vacillating. So I I am a I am a Shakespearean uh, uh, character at this point right now, uh, try, wrestling with this answer. That's uh, that said, I appreciate that you have now put it into my head that I desperately need to see a version of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with Vader uh-huh. in it, as well as a version of uh, A New Hope. With nurse, nurse Ratchet in. So thank you for putting that in my head. <laughs> <laughs> nurse Ratchet is, she's scum and villainy. <laughs> well, Joe, I appreciate you being I, like the, the audience that has like a kind of be swayed in this argument. So, um, but uh, Josh, since you are a guest, let me, let me turn it over to you now. What are, what are your thoughts on, on what I've proposed? I have so many thoughts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but to stick with this question, um, I actually, my thought process is actually almost beat for beat the same as Joe's. I struggle with this a lot as well, but I ultimately come down on the side of he's not redeemed, at least in my eyes. Um, I do think the films are saying, I think the authority, the, the authorial intent is to say he is redeemed. Um, but I don't know that I buy that. You know, it is interesting because I think it's ironic. You said that seeing the Anakin Skywalker of the prequels um, actually made Vader less redeemable or um, more more irredeemable, as the case may be. When ironically, I think the intent was the opposite. I think through seeing, I think George Lucas's expectation was through seeing who he was as a young man and the good man that he was, you would be more apt to accept his redemption or know that he has good in him. When ironically, as you point out, seeing him murder a bunch of kids, a room full of helpless kids in episode three is kind of what for you, and I would say probably for me as well, is kind of beyond the pale. I think that and you know slaughtering the 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 tribe of of um of tuscans in episode two who i actually by the way um i have made a point not to refer to them as sand people or tuscan raiders um since seeing their sort of uh uh more rounded depiction in the book of boba fett where you know it's really framed as like they are the the native inhabitants of of Tatooine so to call them you know raiders is is kind of unfair because Mm. you know any raiding that's going on is because of all of these you know colonizers who have shown up on on their planet and set up shop and they're just like what are you doing uh uh, but I digress so yeah I don't think that Vader is redeemed just because he does one final act of good where he decides to do the right thing um and there's also a way that you can look at what he does in a very selfish way um uh, because now that we have the prequels basically what he does when he um he intervenes when the emperor is 
is killing his son, he's basically, with the context of the prequels, flashing back to the failure, his failure to save Padme's life. And he's basically, what must be going through his mind is, wait a minute, I've been here before. I have an opportunity to save somebody I love, so I'm going to take it. So it's kind of, you know, selfish in a sense. Um, I don't know that he's acting so much out of, you know, wait a minute, uh, the Emperor's evil and I have a chance to do the right thing once and for all. I think there's a way to read it where he's doing it selfishly, where, you know, he, um, his whole, the whole catalyst or the final straw, depending on how you look at it for his fall to the dark side was his attachment to his loved ones and his inability to let go, wanting to possess them. And ultimately the idea of not being with Padme or being without Padme, uh, you know, makes him crazy and makes him willing to, to turn to the dark side and do whatever Palpatine says and just, you know, on a dime slaughter his best friend and a room full of kids. And I think he's, he realizes, wait a second, I don't want the emperor to murder my son. I love my son. Um, And, you know, whether or not that is, I mean, which I certainly think is the right thing to do, you know, hard to see what his, um, his his motives are. I don't know that you can definitively say that they're so uh, clear cut. Um, it seems to me it's a nu- it's yet another act of selfishness potentially. And the one final thing I will say on this um, in an upcoming episode of Trash Compactor, a Star Wars podcast, June sixth, I believe we have an episode. Uh, we have a long conversation about Return of the Jedi, where we do discuss very briefly. We kind of have a mini version of this discussion at the end. Uh, we kind of landed on something similar, and then um, my friend John, who's um, a frequent guest on uh, Trash Compactor, who was not on that episode, he heard the discussion and he pointed out that in his mind, Vader's soul is what's redeemed there. Not so much whether or not he should be forgiven by the people around him or, you know, the galaxy is, you know, they they owe him some kind of forgiveness. He really made the distinction that in that moment, you know, Vader redeems his soul or um, he redeems his soul in the eyes of the Force, uh, whatever that means, which I think is an interesting idea and I think is certainly... Um, what is there in the text. I think that's the intent. I think it is a very, you know, Christian um, Mm -hmm. notion about, you know, um, souls and forgiveness and and all that. But um, one interesting distinction, though, that I want uh, to make that occurred to me was, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish. I'm not very much practicing, but um you know, some of the values in the Jewish faith that separate it from, you know, Christian values is uh, really embodied, I think, in the observance of Yom Kippur, which is, you know, the New Year's um, ceremony, um, when we ask uh, forgiveness for uh, you know, our sins, the other things that uh, we did uh, wrong, the mistakes that we made in uh, the previous year in preparation for a clean slate for uh, the upcoming new year. And one of the things that you do in Yom Kippur is you need to ask forgiveness from the people you have wronged before you can ask forgiveness of God, right? Mm-hmm. So, so you basically have to um, have to settle up with the real people who um, who bore the brunt of your mistakes or your sins or what have you uh, before God or the universe or whatever um, can forgive you, before you can even ask for that forgiveness. And so I, I think that, you know, approaching this question of does Darth Vader redeem himself at the end of Return of the Jedi – it's kind of a cop out, but I think it depends on your point of view. I think it depends on where you're coming from. Um, I mean, if you believe that you know your redemption, the uh, the tally is uh, between like your soul and the universe, then sure, okay, uh, 
you know, maybe in the eyes of the force or God or the universe, um, all all it uh, takes is one final change of heart and you're good to go. If you take a more kind of humanist material view of um, goodness and redemption, uh, Vader, while that's a good start to have a change of heart at the end, um, he will never be able to do right by the people that he wronged, uh, by the galaxy that he wronged. He will never be able uh, to make up in the material world for all the pain and death and destruction that he caused. So um, I think... I think it's an I think it's an open question. I don't I think it depends on um where you're coming from and you know I uh, you know in a way he got off easy because he died. He's lucky he died. Uh because he didn't uh, he didn't have to face those um you know the reckoning the the uh you know the rest of his life would have had to have been devoted to making up for or apologizing for um the the destruction that he's responsible for and you know um who's to say that he he would have been willing or able to stick with that i mean after years mm-hmm. and years of, of trying to do the right thing and uh, you know constantly being challenged or told it's not enough it's not enough you know who's to say he wouldn't just go right back to the dark side which as we all know is quicker easier more seductive to get what you want no those are so many good points josh um yeah they are great points josh you know, just to kind of, I mean, I guess I just do elaborate on, on, on your last point, but what I want to, before I throw it to Chris is like, I guess if he had survived though, he would have, I mean, he arguably would be put on trial and possibly executed if the rebellion believed in that kind of justice. But uh, um, uh, Chris, you, you have sat with this uh, l- the longest probably since I'm the, I had this discussion with you first mm-hmm. uh, out of everyone here. So what are your current thoughts on the question that I posed? Sure, sure. And I'll, I'll I've got, I definitely have some thoughts uh, in response to both Joe and Josh as well as things we've talked about, James, but Joe, you had, you had your hand up. You were going to respond to something Josh said. So why don't you go well, first? Well, Josh, the way he put it uh, very eloquently, uh, it reminds me of like the, uh, uh, the 10 step program and Alcoholics Anonymous or, 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 or drug program. And you have to forgive the people you've wronged before you can uh, uh, forgive mm. quote unquote maker before we make a maker will forgive, uh, forgive you. So you have to make right with the people you've harmed physically and, and psychologically. And, um, that you know again that's on a personal level yeah you you might find that that forgiveness but it doesn't mean it wipes out what you've done um so uh i'm still struggling guys i'm still struggling so but um you made me think about some things josh so uh go ahead chris i just just wanted to let you you know just wanted to get that out there yeah no i mean i think i think you've both brought up really really good points and i know james has James has some more. I, for me, whether or not Vader is redeemed by the end of Jedi totally depends on the scale of the discussion. Um, and the reason I say that is because I, I agree with Josh 100% that the authorial intent is that Vader is redeemed. That's why he shows up at the end. He's now, on, like, once he's turned back to the light side, that's how he dies and that's how he stays. So I definitely think that was the, the intent. Um, I do think that if we just look at just the original trilogy episodes four through six, I do think Vader is redeemed. I say that because we talk about there's, there's all sorts of talk about what he did, but we don't entirely know what he did. Right. Right. Um, You know, we know that he apparently killed Anakin. That said, we also learn that he is Anakin. So it, you know, it's true from a certain point of view. So how much of the evil that we've heard Vader has done is, is actually evil versus the mythology spun around this creature of myth who is Vader. So I think that when you look at it strictly from episodes four through six, I think Vader can be redeemed. Yes, he is part of trying to crush the rebellion. Uh, Yes, he has every intention of killing Obi-Wan Kenobi, but you know, in those contexts, in those specific contexts, He's not the one who built or used the Death Star. He, uh, uh, Obi-Wan allowed himself to be struck down by Vader. Um, you know, there are a number of ways in which we saw Vader torture Han and Leia, and that's, I, I obviously that's a bad thing. Um, but then he's the one, he's the reason the Emperor dies. He kills the Emperor as far as we know, right? So I think episodes four through six, he is redeemed. I think when you zoom out, though, and you start incorporating other elements of his story, I think that's when it gets 
no, I wouldn't even say it gets murkier because I don't think it does get murkier. I don't think he finds redemption. I don't think he can be redeemed for what he's done. I think we see that once he kills everybody that he kills in the first three movies, episodes one through three, really episodes two through three with the Tuscan Raiders and and with Mace and with the younglings. So I think he hits a point of, of not being able to be redeemed there on that scale. And also, I, I don't think the storytelling was very good from episodes one through three. So not only do I am I disinclined to believe that Vader is is redeemable, but also I don't like Anakin as a character. So it's not even like I care whether or not he is redeemed. And I don't know how much that plays into, and I've got a couple of other things, but really quickly, I want to put the question to the three of you. How much does your opinion of Anakin, based on just episodes one through three, how much of that does plays into whether or not you think Anakin is redeemable is is whether or not you, I mean, do you even want to see him redeemed based on the character that we've been introduced to in episodes one through three? Oh, well, that's a, yeah, that's a complex question. Um, you know, if we're only taking episodes one through three into consideration, I don't really care enough about the character Anakin, and he's not my favorite at that point. Like, I'm, I'm actually at that point rooting for him to become Darth Vader because it's a lot more interesting once he's in the suit. Yeah, see, uh, that, and that to me is really interesting. Joe, Josh, what do you guys think? Oh boy, I don't know. It's uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one, Chris. But you, but the way you framed it, though, if you're just looking at the the middle trilogy, um, and we don't know his horrendous, horrific background, then yeah, maybe he's redeemable. But uh, uh, once we learn these things that he did in the past, uh, yeah, I mean, no, he's not. Again, you can you can ask for forgiveness. You can ask for those of your loved ones and friends and 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 even your maker but uh doesn't mean you're going to get it and um so no i don't i'm i'm starting to you know not waver as much and i don't think he's you know he's not i don't think he's uh redeemable well, and, and whether i mean here even without the the middle three movies you know whether or not you're rooting for a character i think yeah makes it you know makes it relevant i mean josh what do you, what do you think with your storytelling experience and, and your movie consumption experience well, I'm going to answer your question sideways. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, by all means. Sounds like me. <laughs> I think um, here, here's one thing I can't quite get get over um, when it comes to Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader. Um, in a lot of ways, this isn't. It's it's very hard to see the through line the way he's depicted it, um, in these six movies uh, because he's 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 a composite character he's um right. he's never uh portrayed by the same that his so so in episode one he's he, um he's portrayed by one actor who only portrays him in that one movie and then um he's he's played by a completely different actor a completely different um uh, who's a completely different age in the next movie so at least for me, I'm not. There's there's a disconnect for me um, in my head and my you know recognition of the continuity of that character. Like in my mind, it's very hard for me to see the young boy who we see in that first movie, Episode One, to see that it um, as the same character as Anakin Skywalker in Episode Two. Which so so if you're if you're doing the math, if you're playing along at home, um, that's a, th a one third of the character's arc um, in the prequel trilogy for me is completely gone uh, because uh, because I have a hard time seeing that as a, a part of the journey of this one character. Then you have um, one actor who portrays him for two movies. Those two movies are arguably the only time that we are seeing this uh, fully formed conception of the Anakin Skywalker character, um, uh, the way he, um, where he evolved to, this conception of the character, right? Um, the, uh, then once you get to, uh, to episode four, to Star Wars A New Hope, he's played by... Uh, 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 by two actors, well, really three actors, if you count uh, Bob Anderson, the stuntman, um, mm -hmm. and 
that the idea that he he was Anakin Skywalker um, wasn't even there when they were uh, making the movie. Right. So 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 it's literally not not intended to be the same character when it was made. You know, retroactively, it like you know kind of works, and you can kind of paper it over. But uh, but the point stands that uh, that it is literally not the same character. So now you have. Uh, so you're um, now uh, two thirds of the way in to the story of this character. He's been portrayed by three different actors, uh, um, uh, you know, you know, four different actors if you count uh, the voice separately, and we don't even have a, you know, w- uh, where we're at at this point. He's not even supposed to be that same character. Um, uh, by the time you actually see him without his mask off. Um, uh, by the end of episode six, that's yet another, another actor, actor right. who you don't who you don't associate. You don't see in your mind. Oh, like that's the same guy who I last saw in episode three on the uh, the uh, the volcano planet of uh, uh, Mustafar after uh, battling with Obi Wan. So 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 my point is is that a lot of this a lot of this arc is really is really is is really an intellectual exercise and you don't feel it from the movie you don't you don't you're not brought along this journey with the characters uh oh uh, with the character excuse me um in the movies themselves you are you 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 are told these things and you can resolve them uh, to see that continuity uh, but it's an intellectual exercise it's not it's not something the movies have you know given you so 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 in that sense i would have to say then t- uh, to answer your question i would say i'm more willing to entertain the possibility of redemption if we're just including the original trilogy uh, because i think it's more straightforward a journey and again as you pointed out we don't see these horrible things that uh vader did uh, when he was younger and actually uh uh, chris uh, you bring up a really good point the uh, the things that we hear about him um in the original trilogy uh, uh you know now we have that seed of doubt that we learn that he didn't literally kill Anakin Skywalker. It's 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 sort of a um, it's sort of playing fast and loose with the truth. So that kind of calls into uh, question. Okay, like what else about this guy are we just k- kind of making assumptions about based on what we're told? Um, I think there's enough like gray area there that y- you know you can kind of squint and not look too close, and you can kind of buy it. Um, I still think you could make a case that um, Vader hasn't done anything to really uh, deserve full redemption. Once you introduce the prequels, I just think the whole thing is just um, so much more muddled. And I don't mean complicated. I mean muddled that, that I would have to say that I'm less inclined to um, give vader slash anakin the benefit of the doubt when you take the the prequels into consideration right and that's and that's where i'm and i'm gonna uh, close out sort of where i was at because there's one more time that i sort of want to zoom out before i'm I'm done sort of sharing you know where i think where i am on vader and that's because i if i zoom out one more time right for me personally, and I know there are other there are other ways to look at Vader, but if I zoom out one more time and I take into account the Clone Wars, the cartoon series, now it's a different beast again. Um, yes, Chris, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I yeah. was going to say, like, like as much as like as Josh, you said the prequels were meant for us to like Anakin. I, I did dislike them more, but the Clone Wars actually that actually made me like Anakin. So go yes. ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Yes, no, 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 and that's exactly what I was going to say. Is I like Anakin in the in the cartoon series, and we see more of him being a great pilot. And he's not just cocky; we see him growing, and that's something we don't really get in the movies. We don't get to see him grow in the movies, which is one of the reasons I don't really like him. One could make the argument that he does, but I don't see any growth in him. And then specifically, I want to sort of draw everybody's attention to season three, episodes fifteen through seventeen. They take place on this planet called Mortis. And basically, you have Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Ahsoka are sort of abducted to this planet where we meet the ones, the father, the daughter, and the son. And the father strikes a balance between the daughter, who is of the light side, and the son, who's of the dark side. 
and strikes a balance there. And all three of them are trapped on this planet to retain balance in the force. And, um, and it gets upset while they're there. And in the, in that, um, in the, the, that all that happening and all the happenings, um, Anakin is made aware of his future. He becomes aware of what he will become. And he is so distraught by what this is that he is lured to the dark side in the hopes of avoiding it. And that is temporary because when he loses, when the father removes those memories, he says, my son broke the laws of time that is not meant to happen and makes Anakin forget. Anakin sort of returns to the light side. But but the Clone Wars, those three episodes, I think, do a really great job of fleshing out Anakin and his personal struggles. But the Clone Wars series in general really gets us to a point where we're going, the Jedi don't know what they're doing. And they're dabbling in things they really shouldn't be dabbling in. And they only really see the trap until they're in it. So, excuse me, I still, with that context, I still don't think that, excuse me, Vader is redeemable, but now he's more relatable. And because he's more relatable, the idea of him being redeemed later doesn't necessarily bother me as much. But my final point is sort of in relation to that season three, episodes 15 through 17 on Mortis, um, which is that ultimately what is the redemption that we see at the end, right? Because Josh mentioned earlier that it's very, it's a very Christian take on on redemption and, and the afterlife and life after death. Um, and, I, and I agree with that because redemption generally means something good. That said, the Force doesn't actually care about good or bad. It cares about balance. And so I think from the Force's perspective, so much as in so much and so as it has one, um, Vader is in that moment, Anakin is redeemed. And the reason he's redeemed is not because he suddenly did a good thing and turned back to the light side, but because he finally managed to bring balance to the force through saving Luke and uh, evidently killing the emperor. Um, and so he is finally fulfilled the prophecy. Everything is finally in balance. And I, and so I think that in terms of, if we want to look at it that way, I think he is redeemed, but not because he did a good thing, but because he did the thing he was meant to do. So, so I think it's a very complex, interesting question, um, but it just depends on the scope. I agree. I agree with the points you you made, Chris, about that. I mean, I that yes, if, audience, if you have you know Disney Plus and can get the Clone Wars, I I, do, I recommend those episodes as well that Chris pointed out because I thought that's I guess we good. probably should have said spoilers ahead, right? Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, you know, a yeah. <laughs> little little bit. Well, but uh, I mean, still the rest of the series is worth watching. But um, but if you haven't seen those episodes, there's a lot of nuance that happens in those three episodes that I think is still worth watching, even though you know the outcome that we've summarized here. But um, yeah, I um, it's it's a scope thing. But uh, before I, I before I go further, my points, Joe, you've had your hand up for a while. What, what were your thoughts? Well, Josh, uh, it's what I like about these these uh, podcasts is you, these revelations are always always coming forth. And Josh, uh, your what you spoke about. Uh, so beautifully and eloquently it was a revelation to me. I never thought of Vader in the New Hope as being that character without subtext and without nuance because it wasn't thought of it the character that way. The, the prequels weren't even you know they weren't uh, maybe they were they were in the back of uh, uh, Lucas's mind. But yeah, Vader is Vader's just the guy in the black hat in the first movie in, in exactly. New Hope, right? Exactly. And, and and later on be, uh, because of uh, the uh, uh, the, the prequels, Vader is basically stitched together like the Frankenstein monster, so to speak. And that's why maybe it is difficult to, uh, to, uh, uh, to relate to him. Uh, so yeah, that's, um, you blew my mind, Josh, with that. And uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, so, uh, uh, well, so Joe, uh, 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 you actually invoked um, uh, Michael Corleone, uh, which yes. I think is a, of all the villains that you mentioned, I think that 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 is uh, the Michael Corleone example is the one that that um, that is the closest analog to mm -hmm. who uh, the prequels were trying to make Anakin into. It was supposed to be a Michael Corleone thing where, you know, he starts off good. And then we see through the course of especially that first film, mm -hmm. um, we see we follow him through this journey we see all the choices he makes we understand why he's making these choices until all of a sudden we realize oh shit he's he's the bad guy now like he's 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 right. you know he's fallen someplace and you can do that when you know setting the writing aside for a second you can do that when you have the actor who you know you're relating to you're you're 
uh, you're really he's bringing you Pacino is really um, bringing you along for the character of this man. Oh, yeah. And and you're really I mean, it's really amazing. Like you are really uh, you feel like you're seeing what's behind his eyes. And, you know, you're really kind of um, filling in the inner life that this character has. Um, whereas with uh, the prequels, you don't really get the opportunity uh, to do that. Like the illusion that cinema um, is able to create when it works is this illusion of interiority, is this illusion of continuity, is this illusion of, you know, of, 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 of closeness with a a character who doesn't who doesn't actually exist and it's so easy to break the spell of that illusion and i think that that anakin in the prequels and in the the first six movies in general uh, just has so many things working against it working that again i think uh, you know it's really an intellectual exercise like this whole fall and uh, redemption of this character uh, because it never really connects emotionally for for so many uh, 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 technical reasons that like you know uh, you can argue until the blue uh, until you're blue in the face that those th- things shouldn't matter but they do mm, no they do you're right yeah. and, uh, you know in the Godfather reference you just made the Michael Corleone reference uh, at the beginning and the, during the the wedding Constanzia's wedding. Uh, He's um, he tells Kate, "That's my family, Kate. That's not it's me. It's not me. Yeah, right. and we know, you know, right then and there, you know. <laughs> yeah, you well, know, so you have a fall. It's there's a you. journey. There's a journey ahead. Once the others those lines, right? He was Joe College at the beginning, right? Yep. And then we see his 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 uh, his rise to power and his fall as a human being. If yeah. somebody, if you're going to do a tragic fall, it needs to stick. You need to mm-hmm. stick landing on a tragic fall because if you don't, it's just tragic. <laughs> like yeah. it's yeah. you know you've got you've got to see the fall of the hero in order for you know the hero the the hero turning into villain is a very compelling storyline but only if you stick the story and and um i think what was meant to be a tragic fall to the dark side the prequels just utterly demolish any possibility of that yeah I, um I, and I it's think. also really and it's also really interesting because i've been reevaluating what happens in attack of the clones in episode 2 you know really in uh, the aftermath of the Book of Boba Fett and how the Tuscans are portrayed, because 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 arguably he turns to the dark side in Episode Two. He he slaughters an entire village yep. of men, women, and children, yep. and he brags about it. And I mean, not I mean, he doesn't brag about it, uh, but he he um he he's certainly like, righteous about it. Yeah, and he's like, you know, you know, look at what uh, uh look at what I did. And, you know, it's sort of, um, you know, Padme's reaction to hearing that is kind of inexplicable and inhuman. The The only way that that everyone's reactions and the film's reactions, the way the film handles it, makes sense is if you accept that the, the, the Tuscans are something less than human, or I guess human is the wrong word, uh, but like less than, you know... S- sentient that on some level they are literally like you know savages or whatever you want to call them and that that reading is is incompatible with um the way that they're depicted in uh, the uh, the book of boba fett and actually also in uh the mandalorian i think that uh, you know, uh, just learning that they they are able to be reasoned with, and you know, you can communicate with them. Uh, we get that uh, first in I think season one of Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of makes you reevaluate the whole uh, the whole thing. Um, so I mean, it's kind of weird because you know, if you accept that, which I think is the correct quote unquote reading. Um, uh, because I'm not really comfortable with the idea that is sort of given in th- the first six films that th- uh, the Tuscans are literally savages, and you know it's a fictional universe, so 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 th- so that's just what they are. Uh, like even then, I think that that's an uncomfortable reading. So I I prefer the one 
it it rings more true to me that they're you know more multifaceted and uh either not quote unquote savage um mindless animals um as anakin says in episode two it's sort of strange like the way the movie the way attack of the clones wants us to read that is we it's like it's okay i know he he murdered men women and children uh, but they were only savages, so so it's like it's like there's some wiggle room there, and that's like kind of weird uh, because uh, by any measure, that's when he falls to the dark side, right? Which I Correct. right, yeah, I agree with agree with that. Um, you know, just to uh, well, to kind of elaborate. Well, one before I elaborate on, on a larger point that I know is going to open more discussion, I just want to say both for Chris and and Josh, you're taking into account just the episodes four through six and how we don't really know what Vader really, how dark he is and stuff. It, it just, the analogy came to my head. Well, I guess Vader's kind of like the Dread Pirate Roberts then. Um, we don't, we don't really know what he did. Sure. But, um, sure. Um, but to, to get to this, like the, the bigger point, like Josh, on, on, I think on that episode, you let me preview of Return of the Jedi. You had mentioned in the text that George Lucas's idea of the dark side is that once you're down that path, you're down that path. Is that, that correct? In his, in his interpretation of the force. Yeah, so this was something that was kind of a late revelation to me. I didn't understand this when I was a kid, and this is only something that I actually... I only learned from reading J.W. Rinsler's Making of Revenge of the Sith, which uh, came out um, not long after the movie came out. So we're talking about like 2005. They're talking about the reshoots that they did um, to, um, uh, to put some more meat on the bones of Anakin's fall and kind of retool the movie a, a little bit uh, uh, because originally basically the way the dark side works is the more the, the more evil things you do the more times you you give in uh to, uh, to greed and uh you give in to your anger uh, there's sort of like a um there's like a force meter right and so every time you you do that you give in to your anger or you do something evil you you tick a little further over into the red a little further over into the dark side until finally do one thing that makes you cross the threshold and then it's like it's like flipping a switch uh, like all of a sudden you're on the dark side and you're consumed with like hate and anger and evil and all this and then like you're a bad guy and and if you if you accept that version, uh, like those mechanics of how the Force works, then then all the movies make sense. The way that Vader and the Emperor are trying to make Luke fall to the dark side, they are trying to goad him into uh, to giving into his anger, and they're trying to goad him into attacking more and more and more so that his Force meter will... Uh, uh, cross over the dark side line, and then and then he'll be bad. Um, and if you accept that, then um, Vader doing one last heroic act, one good thing, would hypothetically be enough to um, uh, to put him back into the light side territory the only problem with that is is that dramatically on screen that doesn't really work um uh, because you know if you look at episode three the episode three that we got even then a lot of people said that that anakin's fall his turn his acceptance of you know being on the dark side and uh, uh becoming vader is like it's sort of like a very quick heel turn it seems very sudden and unexpected and that's because what they were trying to soften was an even more, you know, abrupt heel turn that they apparently, you know, once they saw uh, the first cut of the movie, they realized wasn't really working um, because you don't understand why he's all of a sudden doing that. So then they retooled the movie uh, to really make his motivations more clear. They are uh, they really, you know, fo- uh uh, focused it to be more about he's um, he um, he's scared about losing Padme, and the only way uh, th- uh, that he can see to save her is through learning this forbidden knowledge that 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 Palpatine has, and that's sort of uh, the carrot that he uses um, 
to uh, convince him uh, to follow him and that uh, the Jedi are bad. So, 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 see, so it does, is... it does kind of soften it a little bit. Um, uh, but that, uh, but that issue is still there. Because the problem is, I, I think they tried to invent a new thing they didn't when they didn't need to invent a new thing. I think what they needed to do was they, because ultimately they showed us a lot of big battles and they showed us what was happening on, on the scale of the Galactic Republic, right? They were showing us such a big, so much of a big scale they were showing us because we had to find out what happened with the droids and what happened with Yoda and what happened with Obi-Wan. And so they were trying to tell us too many stories at once. You know, when you look at, when you look at something, a story like, say, Macbeth, you know, every time there's like a war or a big battle, it happens off screen. It happens off stage. You don't see any of these things happening. And the reason you don't see them happening, in my opinion, is because they need to stay focused on Shakespeare as a writer. And our attention as the audience, it, our, our focus has to stay on Macbeth. We need to be able to see what's happening with him and with Lady Macbeth in order to understand why he falls in the first damn place, right? We need to be able to see the arc of his character. And so that's why so much of the action happens behind closed doors with him, with his wife, um, as opposed to, hey, we're going to show you a really big battle now that's going to last for, I don't know, 20 pages of the script, even 10 pages of the script, right? And so I think that in my opinion, that was part of the problem is that as ridiculous as it probably sounds to some of our listeners, I think they didn't spend enough time on Anakin because there w they ended up with no room for nuance. And without that room for nuance, I think you get what we got. Right. And also I would say it's probably, again, we, we could discuss this on and on, but the, the writing uh, and the handling of the character acting wise didn't give way to a lot of nuance that probably could have been there. And I'm not playing anything against Hayden Christensen um, because, you know, like he's working with the script. And as you know, we've said that George Lucas was looking for less emotion in his actors. So um, that was kind of you know doing maybe he could, maybe he couldn't give the nuanced emotion of Anakin checking these boxes to fall to the dark side. But I will also say sort of that that description of how you turn to the dark side almost you know is is sort of a form of possession and not uh, like you do things obviously, but then once you've done them, you're you're in the dark side, which is like it, the dark side's possessing you, which is is sort of like. I don't like the description because it kind of takes away that it's that it's not it's not solely Anakin's fault. He did these bad things. It removes agency. Out. It removes agency. Which exactly. I don't like. Exactly. It kind of gets you off the hook. Yeah. So you, with with that in mind, yeah, I guess he could be redeemed because he finally did a good act and he's overall a good person. Um, but I I don't know if I like that as as a ticker thing because it, like I said, it takes away agency, it takes away free will, and I thought the force is kind of like and who how you wield the force is sort of like. It's based upon the, the Jedi or Sith who's wielding it and their personality and intention. Well, and now the question becomes, okay, so what's the threshold? Because Luke uses the dark side in Return of the Jedi at the very beginning when he force chokes the Gamarian pig guards. And they haven't attacked him. They didn't do anything. Oh, they're a threat to him, but they didn't actually do anything. But he very callously and casually used, like just force chokes them. So what's what exactly is the threshold target well, in here? My, well, in my well, head I, canon... Uh, Oh, no, sorry. I was just going to say, in my head, Kenan, I choose to believe that he didn't actually kill them. He just kind of, uh, you know, like, closes their airways and they just kind of passed out. But, uh, I mean, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, and, and it's true. He didn't He didn't kill them. He didn't take a life. Um, but, you know, I, 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 that's what I mean is I just I don't know exactly where the threshold is because technically, you know, because he is using I – mean, and I know there are arguments that, okay, we're talking about gray force powers as opposed to dark or light. Um but, you know, it's where where's the threshold? Can you use it so many times before you turn over? Or does it have to do with how many people you kill or whether or not you kill them in anger? Because Luke kills some, you know, some TIE pilots and some Imperials. He blows up uh, an AT-AT walker on off. Like, and the I, sail I just, barge. And, 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 and the sail barge. Um, uh, but not but not the Death Star. Uh, <laughs> the Death Star. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and, and so I'm not, uh, you know, my argument is not that, oh, it, it's this flawed storytelling. And so it, it doesn't make sense. That that wouldn't be my argument because I think it, I think it can make sense depending on how it was intended. I just think that, you know, some of the, some of the, the places that we found ourselves, Josh, I, I, I can't remember 
where it is that you said this, but for anybody who doesn't listen to Trash Compactor, you really should because there's some really, really good, interesting conversations on there. And it's going to cover oh, thanks, a lot buddy. of stuff you've thought about before, but from angles you didn't anticipate. So it's good. But I can't remember, but you mentioned at some point in answer to somebody said something about the ideal, the quote, ideal watching order. And you said, no, Lucas meant for them to be watched one through six straight through. And, yeah, um, and that really, he does, yeah. Not, it's it's odd because it really undermines the power of the revelation and empire and maybe we only feel that way because we you know because of when you know when we grew up those were the only movies we had whatever um but i just i think that you know i think that a lot of the parts of the storytelling here undermine other parts and i think that was the problem ultimate problem i had with the prequels is that there were parts of the that storytelling that undermined uh, the storytelling done in the original trilogy, I know that one of the things that always bothered me about the sequels was this idea of being able to jump to or from planets. As much as I enjoy Rogue One, they managed to jump to hyperspace from the planet, planet side, which they shouldn't be able to do because the gravity well stops hyperspace jumps. And that's what the interdictor technology is based on. Interdictors pull you out of hyperspace by creating a gravity well. It's None of it's real, but if you set the rules, I need to understand exactly why it is you're breaking them and how. And that's, I feel the same with stories and storytelling is, are you undermining yourself? And I think that's what we run into here because, you know, then you can have four fools such as us sitting around and arguing whether or not uh, Vader is actually redeemed when that doesn't, again, or, 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 you know, the author's intent here, as you mentioned, Josh, is that he is redeemed. So you didn't intend for us to debate it, but that's what we're doing because I think your storytelling undermined your own storytelling. You know, you bring up a really interesting point, actually, um, in terms of the watching order. I think similar to how when you haven't seen the prequels and you've just and you're just talking about episodes four to six, um, you kind of accept Vader's redemption. I think similarly, if you watch four to six and then one to three, I think it also still kind of works for a similar reason uh, uh, because you're you you've seen the redemption and then you see the fall so you don't then have to be confronted with the redemption again having seen the fall mm. right so so it doesn't necessarily which, invalidate it because you can't go back to how you felt exactly that's interesting which, uh, which i think tracks with the thought process of the creator who made them right so so you know he did the redemption first uh, before really like you know you can imagine if he made one through three, he would have maybe depicted the redemption in a different way or or made the redemption a little more complicated because he would have had to wrestle with, hey, I showed this guy murder a room full of kids a couple of movies ago. I should probably um, do something about that. How do, how do I feel about that? So, mm-hmm. so, so, you know, once again, like I think, I know I keep saying this, but this whole arc is an intellectual exercise um, that, that, um, that only you know works if you if you impose this outside logic on it well i mean i i think my my feelings about like watching the prequels and then and obviously in the context of our discussion it seems like lucas was like i really got to show that he's bad so let's do these things that are way out of proportion proportion? yes yeah the way out of proportion for what you want this character to be like slaughtering tuscans murdering children um, you know, and every, everything else he's done in the prequels um, is is like way out of proportion for the level of redemption that, that at least we're talking about here. Well, the other interesting uh, Josh, thing is, oh, no, sorry, go ahead. Well, I just want to say you, you keep blowing my mind. Um, and this goes back to a little bit uh, uh, what you said a few minutes ago. You, when we were talking about the heel turn. Um, so I was thinking about this and, and how, it, how that could work. And so maybe what we should be talking about, and well, I'll talk to you about villainy but the force in star wars what is that so you're but you just jogged into my head or just blew my mind was it the force is temptation the force is is everything and because it's temptation you you know you can't have a villain without choice villains make poor choices and then when you tie it all together with what you were talking about earlier about the judeo-christian uh, overtones in this film, well, then free will enters into it, right? So right. I'm, I'm thinking right now that, you know, yeah, this it's Vader made the choice uh, because it was out there that everything is out there to be had, i.e., the, the force, and he makes the choice to do these villainous acts. 
And therefore, okay, I'm going to put my vote in now. He's not redeemable because he's made the choice to do the things he's done. But um, I, I'm starting to look at the force differently now through this discussion that we've been having. And I'm, John, I'm, I'm so glad you you brought up the force and the nature of the force because that kind of led led to me back to something that Chris Chris brought up, and I kind of want to see like thoughts on this. If we and I know like. I mean, I think we could all say like, you know, if we only take episodes four through six as as like the story, then this all makes sense. But like, obviously, this is written into a larger canon. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to dip my toe now into the sequels and say that if we take the sequels into mind and that the force is the thing that's this judging Vader's soul redeemed by his actions, is he redeemed? Because the emperor doesn't get killed and he's still around by episode nine. Yeah, I think I think you have to. However you come down on the redemption question of Vader, I don't think that you can really factor in what happens with the prequels because it's sort of, you know, I would say by episode seven, I think the force is done with Anakin, right? I think that what what the Emperor was doing, uh, you know, and he even says it in uh, A Rise of Skywalker, he... Um, you know, the reprise of, of his line in episode three, the dark side is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. I think this is not the will of the force, um, or whatever that means, but, uh, but to have to have the emperor still be alive, I think is, I think it's counter to the will of the force. And I think, you know, that was um, a last gasp of, of Palpatine trying to, you know, pull a fast one and cheat uh which uh, you know uh, uh the sith seem want to do uh but yeah i do take your point though i think a lot of this really does hinge on the nature of the force and how the force works uh before we can you know really definitively answer this question and unfortunately um this is something that george lucas was intending to get more explicit about in his sequel trilogy which um uh you know i mean your mileage may vary in terms of uh your enjoyment or your judgment of quality for the prequels and also for the sequels we got i i at the very least think there's something to be said for um you know i would have liked to have seen george lucas's version of the sequels not because I hate the sequels that we got, but just because, you know, I kind of wish he had had the opportunity to to finish the thought. And I think that, you know, he he was like like we don't really know. I think he would have 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 come down definitively on some of these questions and given us more to um, chew on in terms of what the intention was and how the force uh, worked. I know that, you know, demystifying the force, I think in the eyes of many fans was one of the um, uh, the biggest flaws, quote unquote, of, of, of the prequels. But that said, I would have liked to have seen him um, follow through on the train of thought that he started in The Phantom Menace by introducing the midichlorians i think that um you know if you read uh he uh, he talks a little bit about um he did an interview with james cameron um uh a couple years ago where he talked about you know the sequels were going to get into like the midichlorians and like how they're really like how um like they are the wills and like we are really you know vessels for for um carrying out their will and they kind of create the force like through their interaction with us or whatever it is. And then, you know, this idea that that sounds, I mean, as I'm saying it, it sounds, it sounds, it sounds very kooky, but I would have loved to have seen (laughs) what the, (laughs) yeah, no, 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 but like, 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 like I would have loved to have seen the, the totality of the, the, the tapestry he was weaving. And I think that, you know, it's hard to factor in the sequels with these questions because, you know, again, whatever you think of George Lucas, whatever you think of the unfiltered George Lucas Star Wars that we got with the prequels, there was 
a consistency of logic and vision, even when he he reversed course or changed his own mind. Like there was still it's still all the point of view, the the thesis of one mind. And I would have liked to have seen the resolution of that. No, I, and I think I, I'm very off topic now. I don't even know what I'm talking about. No, no, no. Well, that's good. Well, I mean, that's can, I join, can I join I, that club then? Yes, yeah, <laughs> no, of course. I can, I can. I can hear where you're coming from because I think you know. For anybody who who hasn't seen um, the Good Place, it's fantastic. If you haven't watched yes. it, you really should. But you know, the premise of it, um, and uh, spoiler ish, but the premise of it is that these people are in the Good Place after they've died. Um, Except it turns out one person doesn't belong. She does not belong in the good place. They screwed up. And all I could think as I was watching it, I was enjoying it for the first, I don't know, say half half of the first season. And then I started thinking, okay, but at some point, like, they're gonna figure out you don't deserve you don't deserve this reward. You don't belong here. So like, how are you going to how are you gonna you've written yourselves into a corner? How are you gonna fix it? And they do. Remarkably, they they take care of it in a great way at the end of the first season. And then it happens at the end of every season where, like, I'm going, okay, you're writing yourselves into a corner again. How are you going to resolve it? Is this going to be the time of disappointment? And they never, ever do. There's always a way they write themselves out of it. So it certainly is possible that whatever he was going to write for the sequels would have, I don't want to use the word redeem, maybe it's too big, but would have redeemed all of the choices he made previously. And I would have gone, okay, I didn't love it, but I get what you were doing. So sure, it's not an incomplete story with the context, you know, contextually. I'm sold. Um, so that's definitely a possibility. But I, I also have to hit an age where usually if I'm about 100 pages into a book and I still don't like it, I don't finish it anymore. I quit on it. <laughs> so so uh, like you said, mileage may vary. No, the other no, thing, too, I, that I should uh, – uh, no, sorry, Joe. Sorry, Joe. Go ahead. I was going to say, okay, my, my, my train is completely gone off the rails here. Just, <laughs> I mean, this is a great discussion. So okay. now I'm thinking, you know, okay, the force is neutral. You, you leave your impressions on it. You make of it what you will. It's like sunlight. It gives you life. But if you're Dr. Evil, it becomes a weapon of death. Oh, I like that. So, very, you know, very nice. So I just, this, I'm loving this. This is great. Let's keep, let's go well, on into the night with this. So, <laughs> and Chris, before, like, Josh, I know you wanted to elaborate, but I will just say, and Josh, I apologize because I'm, you're probably, you're not going to be familiar with this reference, but. To Joe and Chris, the, the the force almost sounds like the speed force in many, yes. in many well, ways. Well, James, the wormhole aliens, the wormhole aliens. Well, the wormhole aliens, yeah, yeah, gosh, yeah. The, the force seems like wormhole aliens. Like you, you see, can encounter you, beings and stuff in there. But that's also, it's one of those things where it's not actually neutral, right? Like we've seen, mm. at least, again, depending on what the scope is, because if you're looking at it from the, the, from the focus of, um, from the perspective of the Clone Wars cartoon, it's not that it is neutral. It's that it has an agenda. It does have an agenda, and the agenda may may veer towards balance, but that doesn't necessarily mean the balance of good and evil. You know, like it might be over a course of totality. Like, so so I hesitate to say that the force is neutral because I don't think it is. I think it just has its own agenda. But Chris, isn't balance the way of the universe, the yin and the yang? I mean, isn't that so? Can't can't that be conceived or considered neutral because it's just a way of things? But it's a human imposed balance. So when we talk about neutral, like, I, you know, the human imposed balance of neutral is sort of like good and evil, right? Because that's why I say, like, I think in the eyes of the force, Vader, maybe Anakin is redeemed because he has now served his purpose. He's done. He's written his part of the story as the force wanted it to be, maybe. Um, but the reason he can't really be redeemed in my eyes is because he didn't do a good thing that canceled out bad things he did. He saved his son. But and that's great, except that doesn't undo all the bad that he did that wouldn't have been necessary to save a son in the first place if he had only just not killed Mace Windu and had gotten rid of the emperor. So, well, at, the, at that time, the chancellor. So I would argue that because it's and this is where we get into, OK, but how much stoicism are we really going to get into here? That's <laughs> yeah. like, you know, when we're talking about neutral. It's it's this is sort of, you know, when when God does an unfair thing. And we say that's not fair. And we have to be reminded that life isn't fair. Mm. So is neutral really a balance between good and evil? Is it an overall balance of the universe? Is there, a, a, you know, somewhere across the universe, is there a galaxy that's suffering because, and they're in balance, they're out of balance because we're out of balance to good. So now we need to be made worse so they can balance out. Like, it, again, for me, it really just depends on scope 
and perspective of the story. And that's why I say I have a I have a difficult time saying that the force is neutral because, you know, we, we talk about the force having tenets that are almost I don't want to say you're uh, uh, that, that are difficult or impossible to reconcile. But like but you're you know, when you're on the if you're a light side user, if you're a Jedi, you're not supposed to have these earthly attachments yet. And uh, yet Obi-Wan, who we acknowledge to be a Jedi master. And even if we didn't, even if we go, man, he got promoted kind of quick. He's a Jedi Knight. He says he loved Anakin like a brother. But but Obi-Wan never flirted with the dark side. So is he actually a good Jedi? Is he actually a bad Jedi? And that's why Anakin fell? Like, well, you know. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because I do think there's a distinction to be made between the will of the Force, whatever that is, and what the Jedi do. Right. Um, right. Absolutely. Uh, uh, because like there's the whole thing where um, I, I think that's that's uh, absolutely if you wanna, accurate um, um, because they're they're acting wanna, the Jedi are acting in a different interest, I think. Well, 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 so so it's 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 sort of it's sort of if you want to use the analogy of the force is God and the Jedi are um, whatever, whatever organized religion, whatever, like codified belief structure um, that's sort of the interface between the unknowable and like sort of the material world. And when you get that sort of that kind of organization, that that, you know, middle man, as it were, you get uh, you get all of the, you know, follies and foibles of, you know, human affairs. Right. So you get the downsides of, you know, a bureaucratic institution and of uh, you know, g- groupthink and the the um, the inertia of like the way things are done and um, you know precepts and traditions and rules are installed and then over time you forget what the intention behind the rule was and it becomes about the adherence to the rule because it's a rule and less you know, you lose why that was a rule in the first place. And I think that that's what you get with the Jedi. Um, And I think that that's the intention there in the prequels, though, again, I think it's a little bit muddled because I think, I think George Lucas um, uh, loved his creation so much that he didn't really have the heart uh, to make them not at the end of the day heroes. So, so I think that, um, because of his own affection for his creation and for the character of 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 Obi Wan, he gives them. He doesn't go all the way. He doesn't uh, commit fully to the bit um, uh, because he wants to give. He wants to give Obi Wan, and he wants to give all. You know, he wants to give the Jedi sort of the benefit of the doubt and give them that escape hatch so that they don't get too much. Um, stink directly on them um well i will i'm sorry josh i'm gonna cut you off i just wanted to like add to your point like as chris and i've added if you go if you watch the clone wars though i think they do a lot more nuanced in their latter seasons of yeah of- but that's later so but that's what i'm saying like that's yeah. like that like that uh, like uh, you know that's like a retcon, right? So, That's so what I'm, yeah. so what totally, I'm saying, it was totally a retcon. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is, is that, is that I don't know how much of that was there when he was making the prequel films. Um, I think when he sees what he did, and he has an opportunity to kind of elaborate, especially when you know he he's he's collaborating with other creative voices who also see what he did um and have their own thoughts and it's sort of a give and take like i think um um and again i haven't seen i haven't seen uh the vast majority of clone wars which is something that i hope to rectify once i get listeners and might have a patreon and maybe that's something that they'll pay me to do um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, i mean it's worth hoping for sure yeah, yeah. Yes. um <laughs> yeah exactly right um i'm mostly joking about that but i know you are Uh, but also kind of not um (laughs) um that uh oh what even the hell was i saying uh yeah 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 that 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 um uh, you know one of the things and again you know i say this all the time like i don't think retcon is a dirty word i know i know i know that it kind of is like one of the fun things about 
you know, sequels or prequels or expanded universe material. Um, one of the great things, the fun things that I like about them is the ability to recontextualize what mm. you've already seen. Like that's uh, like that's cool and fun. And when and when it's it's done well, it can be really great. Um, so, 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 so I'm not somebody who says, uh, like, oh, well that they obviously never had that in their heads when they were making this or they were making that, or when they wrote that, um, I'm not like a stickler for, for the, uh, like, uh, textual originalism or, or whatever you want to call it. Like, uh, like, I don't, uh, really care about that. Like my only thing is I think you can look to, the authorial intent to get clues to try and understand what what you're meant to come away with and then you can kind of evaluate that on your own like okay well do i buy that or do i think that you know that this actually works more if you read it like this instead josh Yes. Yeah, I agree with that because I, I mean, at the beginning, Lucas was obviously painting in broad strokes, right? Yes. You could say for sure. So it wasn't he wasn't Seurat employing pointillism, to right? You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, right. Yeah. So I mean, uh, so what I'm seeing here is you know I love the way I keep trying, I'm jotting down notes like crazy here, guys. Um, you know, it, it makes me think about the force again and and how. Because he's painting in such broad strokes, as he gets further down the narrative tale, he has to bring all these disparate parts together and make it work in the, in, the, in the prequels. So, you know, Chris, earlier I said the force is neutral, but if it's not neutral, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But maybe the force is just sheer will. And once again, it's what you bring to it that sets you down the path you take. So, you know, Luke on Dagobah, right? Mm. You know, you, you you bring with you only what you take. You you find in there only what you bring with you. Don't uh, take you the to... gun, Luke. Don't take it. Why does right. he do that? Sorry, sorry. So you know, uh, again, this all goes back to James's original question, and I, uh, this is the, trying to get back on the path. He'd be man, meandering around like crazy. Uh, but uh, yeah, I I, th I think he's not. Like I'm going to say again, he's not redeemable because he chose this path. Uh, there was this power out there that, that was there to be had, uh, the force, whether it's neutral, whether it's will, whatever the hell it is. It's just, it's some, it's a tool to be employed and people constantly, since the dawn of uh, history, have, have, have used tools to, to make their way and put their stamp on the world. And, um, and Vader took this path and he, he took this tool and he, and he ran with it and he, and he used it, um, in an ill-advised way, I, I, or in an evil way. That's not, that's not even sugarcoated. And it's funny the way that you say that because this is a conversation that Josh and I had about Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. One of our biggest problems was that, you know, Ben Ben Solo, Kylo Ren, was offered not one, but two opportunities for redemption. Mm -hmm. One in, in uh, Force Awakens by Han and one in, uh, you know, Last Jedi by Rey. And uh, and he turns them both down. He decides he's going to be the the source of power in the universe. And so that's it. Th that's all the shots you get. So when yeah. one did that in Rise of Skywalker, even though that was one of my many complaints, it was a very central one because it was this idea of, okay, well, you know, sometimes you make mistakes. And we see that in it's one of the things I love about Avatar The Last Airbender is we see a character who makes mistakes um, and there's still room for redemption. But Kylo Ren is past that point, and I feel the same way about Anakin and Vader. Is like, no, at some point you make your bed, and you got to lie in it. They're just yeah. redemption. We still expect you to do the right thing when it comes along, but doing the right thing isn't going to get you anywhere. It's one of my my central problems with Christianity is this notion of, and obviously a conversation for another time, but this notion of do good on earth so you'll be rewarded in heaven. Okay, but then is it really good? Like this is where we get into what is altruism actually. So, um, you know, if you're doing the thing just for the reward, did you actually do a good thing? And, um, you know, different different story for a different day. But yeah, Here, here's what saying you're sorry about. doesn't fix the lamp. Yeah, <laughs> no. I mean, and, then, and Chris, I mean, Chris, with what you just said, we could also plug the good place again because that's exactly what the good place talks about. Yeah, so yeah. Just extrapolate on. But I do want to like wrap up kind of with like a point that in in my mind, just to kind of go upon we, and Chris you just touched upon and Joe you touched upon like if you're if you're going by this lens and Josh you mentioned it too that this is written sort of with I guess a Christian sort of maybe mindset then I am okay that maybe killing the emperor and saving your son is this first step 
into redemption, but I would have, I think, and obviously this is not what the sequels are about and it wasn't even touched by the expanded universe, but I would say that Darth Vader would be in a sort of forced purgatory until, oh. until he yes, found, James. I guess, like, soul wise had Dude, made how, up for yeah how cool how cool would a sequel trilogy have 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 been um if we had the ghost of anakin skywalker like uh, like trying to intervene um uh, you know in galactic affairs so that he could get his redemption mm. yeah i think that'd be that'd be less that's like the that's would be the that would make the Jedi. That would make the whole six episodes more palpable for me. Like I, I would see like if he's like you said, if he's influencing how galactic politics are going. If he's sort of guiding along the next generation of Jedi to rebuild the thing he tore. That's what I would be looking from. I guess from my background. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. But the will of the Force, as we yeah. just had a discussion about, may be different. And but I, that's that's like that would be satisfying to me in terms of a redemption story arc. You know, it's interesting. We keep talking about the will of the force. And again, you know, maybe it's defined a little more um, in Clone Wars. And obviously, I think George Lucas had his own ideas that uh, 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 would have worked their way into his sequel trilogy that I'm sure would have uh, comported with um, uh, whatever was laid out in the Clone Wars. But so 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 setting all of that aside, because I don't know exactly um uh, what that conception was, but you know, you talk about the will of the force. You talk about uh, you know wanting a balance, and you know whether that means like explicitly good and evil, or like some some kind of a um, a balance that um, manifests as good or evil, um, the way that we define it. Uh, but like, you know, what if the force is like is like the tide, right? It's like, it's like, it's like, it's sort of like, you know, it's like a force of nature, literally. And it goes in and it, it, uh, it goes out and it comes in, right? The real secret is to just like ride, ride the wave, right? You can try to fight what the force is doing. Uh, but when you do that, you will, you will, you will, you will inadvertently cause a lot of, suffering in the material world because this is a force of nature this is where the galaxy or where the world is going you can't fight that um uh, but you can sort of um uh turn into the spin right and you know oh you know because it's interesting uh, uh chris you said something before about how you know the balance is something we are imposing on the force i don't know about that I think we're imposing morality on the force and that, you know, made me think of like this analogy of the tide going in and out. It's like, whatever the force is, um, it, it, it's just kind of doing what it's, it's, it's doing. And I think if you think of it as a force of nature, um, and all of like the the invocations of good and evil and all like the value judgments, I think th- that is what we are imposing on the force. Um, mm. And again, it's also tricky because you know this is something fictional. It's a fictional world, so we we do uh, uh, there is there is an element of you know human imposed morality and intentionality because it literally is created um uh, by uh, the mind of a human being so so uh, so um so so it may have that intentionality and that morality sort of baked into it uh, i i mean i don't know um that's a good um i like that but maybe the force is just mere reflection then yeah right yeah i mean that's I'm just going to get this deep. <laughs> this is great. I love it. No, this is no, where I want no, to yeah, I'm getting a headache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> um, well, I, I am going to, prop- I don't know if you guys and uh, would be up for it, but as a, as a sequel to this podcast, I, I'm going to propose a future podcast down the road where maybe we could talk about our own ideas of what Vader's journey or Anakin's journey would be like. Okay. Oh, that's we, interesting. As a because we're all creatives in this in this podcast, and I'm, I'm I'm I think we've explored a lot of different things here, and I think um, a further exploration of maybe how how his journey in the prequels could have gone differently to make it all make sense would be an interesting exercise for the future. So, if you guys are 
up for that for coming back oh, yeah. to this topic. No, absolutely. Though, sure. yeah, um, I, mean, um, I don't know I, that it won't be. I mean, I can't promise it won't be hot I garbage, do, but I'll come. I up would with love something. to. Oh, that's oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I mean, ah, pontification is my middle name. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I would love yeah. to join for that. I would love to join for that discussion, but the cheeky side of me is really tempted to just like, uh, uh, you know, mail you all a DVD box set of The Godfather One and Two. <laughs> yeah. uh, my two favorite movies of all time. Well, I mean, and, and to go like to kind of like button it. Up, I agree. That's that's probably the best like fall from grace storyline. I will also say like um, you know as as Chris and you, uh, Chris pointed out, and like the Force Awakens and um, you know the um, the Last Jedi, Kylo Ren's story is a pretty like good fall story that could have been Darth Vader's as well if done that mm-hmm. way as well. Well, what I thought they were going with Kylo Ren, I thought that they were doing the like, there's no wiggle room here. Like he is choosing, he, uh, as Chris pointed out, he gets a chance to uh, to come back once. He gets a second chance to come mm-hmm. back. And he, he doubles down, then triples down on the evil. And, you know, whereas you can say that Anakin went down the dark path for good, uh, quote, uh, you know, reasons he was well-intentioned and you can see it's like, it's, uh, you know, love, it's, it's fear of loss. It's, 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 uh, you know, it's all this stuff with Kylo Ren. They were sort of saying, no, he's, he's, he's knowing he wants to be bad. He's choosing to be bad. He's he's choosing it again and again. Um, There's no coming back from this. Like your destiny is in your hands. He is not everybody gets redeemed. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, one of the, uh, frustrating for me things about rise of skywalker is um that's that's not where uh, uh, where they ended up taking the character um is not what i thought they were setting up right i agree with that i mean again we we there's a whole other conversation either on this podcast or maybe in the future josh and your podcast about the sequels and their intention and and love of that but yes i i agree that you know, talking about being just jointed in multiple hands in this in the soup of a narrative, like the, the sequels are all of that. So I thought, um, I guess to wrap this up and to kind of give our thoughts, Joe. So where where do you sit with the initial question? Oh, after this um, intelligent uh, professorial discussion, this <laughs> lecture, this uh, you know, I, I uh, no, he's not redeemable. He's um, he made I you know. Of, he just he did he did make his bed, Chris. He and he has to light it now, and um, uh, I'm not on the fence anymore. He's uh, he's irredeemable. All right, uh, Josh, you having a, a solid opinion at this point? You know what? Fuck it. He's redeemed. <laughs> oh, Josh, <laughs> well, yeah. he said he was he 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 <laughs> Oh, let me explain. Well, let Go me ahead. explain. No, no. Uh, because. Um, Uh, You know, frankly, like at the end of the day, it's really it's really up to you whether you want to, you know, forgive somebody and, you know, call me a softy or whatever. But I think as long as you you are saying the right things or appear to be doing uh, the right things in the right direction, I will allow you to move in the direction of becoming the the person you want to be now moving forward um that that doesn't mean i mean i, I think the word redeemed is kind of loaded like <laughs> uh like the implication there is like so so all is erased and everything is all good uh i wouldn't go that far so if that's uh, your definition of redeemed uh no but i would like to think, you know, at the end of the day, the same way it's Anakin's choice, the same way it's Kylo Ren's choice to to do evil, you know, if you have it within you to uh, uh, to give this man who has done horrible things some grace and you can, you know, not forget what he did, but sort of like allow him or, you know, help facilitate um, him um, choosing to do good and you know recant, then I I would like to think that I would choose to to do that. All right, Josh, okay. that's very that's, that's pretty fair. fair. That's right, very Chris, fair. Chris, what's your way in? 
Yeah, no, unrede- ir- irredeemable. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, no, I mean, you know, it's it's one of those things where um, where he does the right thing at the end, but not necessarily. We we don't know if it's for the right reasons or not. For all we know, it was some misguided. I want my genes to live on, so fuck it. Luke lives, and the emperor dies. Um, <laughs> you know, there's any number of reasons, but at the end of the day, I, I agree with Josh. I think redemption is a is a very loaded word, but I I don't. I don't uh, I, I think that it's it's interesting in the context of the story. But since I do tend to look at Star Wars as a whole, um, given the context of everything, I don't see it as a moment of redemption. I see it as the the dying gasp of somebody who who finally finds their way to, to the surface for a breath of air before they before they die. That's my opinion. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's a good point. That is a good point. Um, I mean, again, I think it's really tricky because he dies. So, yeah. so, so he doesn't have the chance to reckon. The world doesn't have the chance to reckon with what he he wrought, and um, he has no chance to uh, to uh, to do anything else. So, so this is all we got, right? Like, and it's one of those things where you said it yourself that be- because he t- because he and and we don't know if he's intentionally taking the easy way out or not. This could just as easily have been a suicide by cop situation, right? Like, right. Um, so, so who knows? You know, maybe he he started to the, the for all we know the the horror of what he had done began to inf- unfold in front of him, and he just decided, nope, can't deal with it. Bob, uh, you know, I'm going down with the ship. Um, there's any number of reasons. So so since we don't have that again, I think you know for me it's all in the the framework. But since I tend to look at it from the, the greater scale of of here's the other material that's out there, I, I I excuse me, I say he is he is not redeemed. Thumbs down. All right. So uh, I'm going, to, if we were just, if we're going like strictly um, by the storytelling that we have, I'm, I'm going to go, he is not redeemed. However, I will, I do allow for, and as I said, like Josh's interpretation, if we, if it's a first step on a path to redemption, I am for, he's not redeemed, but he's taking a first step into something down the road that he has to work towards would be my final judgment. But if I had to go just based upon the canon, I do not think he's redeemed, but I, 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 same as you, Josh, I would leave the door open if, if it's a gateway to redemption down the road. Yeah, I agree. So, so I would amend uh, my, uh, uh, my fuck it. He's redeemed to um, um, not redeemed ellipsis yet. Question mark. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> which, uh, which again, a very compelling sequel is the ghost of Anakin Skywalker trying to redeem himself. Um, I, the other thing that I'll say too, though, is that, you know, I don't, I don't need him to be redeemed anymore. Same. Yeah. Um, same. yeah. Right. yeah. That's why okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with sort of like condemning him to irredeemable too, is because, because I don't need him redeemed there. T- sometimes we end up with stories and sometimes we have like uh, storylines that we might see in sports, you know, whether somebody's won a championship or not uh, after all these years of, of not quite making the cut, whatever the storyline may be, there are times when I want to see redemption. And then there are other times where I don't, um, you know, at the end of at the end, very end of Harry Potter, uh, not the movies, but the books, um, Harry makes it clear to Voldemort that he he could he could if he feels some remorse, he can come back from where he is. Nobody was interested in him feeling remorse for that. Nobody was interested in the redemption of Voldemort. What mattered was he tried. You know, he tried to he offered the path to redemption, knowing full well he wouldn't take it. And I think ultimately that's why I. You know, for me, it doesn't matter whether he's redeemed or not. I don't need to see him redeemed because ultimately it wasn't about whether or not Vader is saved. It's about whether or not Luke makes the choice to offer him the path. And Luke does. Right. So I think that's why, like, for me, it's all very academic and it's all very interesting. Um, And and part of for audience members, part of where this, you know, the other part of where this conversation sprung up out of in the first place is that, you know, so many of us either did like Vader or currently like Vader as a really cool, a really cool character. Right. And it can be hard to reconcile that sometimes. Uh, knowing what he has done. Like, how do you justify liking a villain who has done these things? It helps that he's make-believe, right? This mm-hmm. isn't this isn't idolizing somebody um, in the real world who did these these horrible things, and it's so hard to reconcile. Um, you know, like, you, you, you look at, um, you know, you look at characters, or uh, characters, you're talking about people in real life who really, um, uh, who sort of have that, like, larger, larger-than-life, um, 
that presence. And, you know, for example, I was recently reading about Joe Paterno, you know, the coach at Penn State and how he was bigger than life and he defined Penn State and to learn that he oversaw Jerry Sandusky. And that was not the only instance of continued sexual abuse happening under his watch. It was really hard for people to cope with that because it really clashed with their values, but also who they viewed as a hero. And so it's different with someone like Vader because he's made up. He didn't actually kill children, right? So um, so I do think it's possible to still enjoy Vader, um, even if he's not necessarily redeemed. It is possible to have our our minds changed as to whether or not we still like him or if he still holds that, that place of value for us. Um, so it's not always just about the the redemption of him in the story, but redemption of him in our our own personal zeitgeist of characters we enjoyed and, and influences we found, I think. Well, fiction needs villains, yeah. you know, whether it be yeah. nar- narrative or, you know, uh, movies, TV, whatever, they, they, you need villains. I mean, otherwise you, have, you don't have conflict. So, And you just gave me a thought, actually, uh, Chris and Joe. Um, uh, sorry to just drop this in there, but, uh, you know, maybe one of the reasons why we accept the redemption a little more um, when you're just speaking in terms of episodes four to six, is that Vader's fall and quote unquote redemption was less about was less about redeeming Anakin Skywalker and was really more about um, about informing Luke's story yes. about showing yeah. that there would yes. counter example of what of what could happen and also helping not only Luke but also the audience realize this lesson of we all have the capability for good and for evil within us, and it's up to us to choose which. And by showing that Vader, this the uh, the black hat of the story of this galaxy, um, the biggest villain there was, to show that even he had a, a spark of light still left in him, Yep, that yeah. shows that, um, not only are transformations possible, but that even the good guys have that spark of 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 evil of the darkness uh, uh, within them, and that good and evil is not is not something that's inborn. It's not something that you are. It's that every day you have to choose to do good. Yep. You have to work hard not to do bad like you need to it's not like one thing you wake up you decide one day okay i'm this like you like which is another reason why i i i don't want to get into this whole thing but um one of the reasons why luke in the last jedi resonates with me is that it shows that that uh, to be a hero is hard and it's constant work you constantly have to work hard to do the right thing. That's not, it's not something automatic. You have to work at it and we can falter and we can question ourselves when we fail uh, uh, to live up uh, to that like hero mantle. Um, so, so I think in the context of the original trilogy, one of the reasons why Vader's redemption works, you go with it is because it's not about Anakin. It's not about Vader. It's about Luke. Right. As right. hundred percent, hundred percent agree. Yeah. Well, I, I think I this is exactly the episode I thought it would be and what we would get into. So I, I'm, I'm so happy um, that that everyone could be here for it and that it went the way it went. So yeah, it was a, it was a nice, tight 96 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> real, real tight. It was good. In, in lieu of our normal recommendations, I am I'm going to recommend the, the trash compactor. Uh, for us and, oh, and Josh, nice. would you take a, would you take a moment and just plug it, everything about it, and what you would want people to be looking looking forward to in this first? Yes, season? please. Yeah, absolutely, right. absolutely. Well, thanks so much, James. I really appreciate this um, this opportunity to come on and uh, talk Star Wars and to plug uh, Trash Compactor, a Star Wars podcast. Which I do have to say, James, you really uh, you're the reason that I I embarked on this podcast because. Um, you know, when you decided to do this show, um, it really inspired me to uh, 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 to get off my own ass and to do something that I've been thinking about doing for a long time. Uh, so I want to thank you for um, for being the inspiration to show that uh, to show me. It's like, hey, you can just you can do this. Um, so thanks for that. But uh, uh, Trash Compactor is really, um, you know, one of 
the things that I enjoy most about Star Wars in this age of Star Wars everywhere all the time is uh, talking about Star Wars with my friends and a podcast is a really great way to do that. And um, so uh, a trash compactor, our tagline is we throw our we throw out our Star Wars opinions where they belong with the rest of the garbage. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, it's, um, I, I like to think the, the tenor of the discussion is, is, is kind of along the lines of this really fantastic discussion we had uh, today. It's about, you know, not debating the, the, the minutia uh, of the in-universe stuff. It's, it's really trying to get into the guts of, you know, what these, movies and stories are doing why we're attracted to them still why we talk about them endlessly and kind of you know get under the hood and see see why they work and maybe throw out some some perspectives or some thoughts that um we hadn't uh, we hadn't occurred to us because one of the things about star wars is that at least for us like i grew up with these movies so a lot of these things kind of remain unexamined because i just accept them from when i was a kid and i i could only look so far into the um you know the uh, the larger meanings and um you know one of the really fun things has has been to reevaluate stuff i liked now that i'm an adult stuff i liked as a a kid with a bit of a more critical eye and uh, you know, I I find it fun. I love conversations like this, and I hope that if you enjoyed this conversation, um, you'll give Trash Compactor a shot because I try to create similar uh, uh, conversations about um, all things Star Wars and some things tangentially related to Star Wars. Uh, Chris and James are our guests on the uh, uh, one of the first episodes, and uh, uh, Joe is a guest on a really great episode that we recorded. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, about Star Wars versus Star Trek, which I'm really uh, excited to hear that one. No, it was great. It was great, Joe. Like, I really, really loved that discussion. I can't, I can't. Oh, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Yeah. I'm yeah. So, looking um, to hear you again. Yeah. So, uh, trashcompod.com and we're trashcompod on all social media. Um, and uh, you can search for Trash Compactor on your podcast platform of choice, and it should come up. And uh, 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 yeah, we have um, we have some good stuff uh, coming up for the next thirteen weeks of season cool. one. Oh, that's great! Exciting and stuff, I, man! Exciting, exciting stuff. stuff. Mm -hmm. And Josh, let me just say that I'm I'm very um, happy I could be a, an influence or an inspiration uh, for the for our for our cousin podcast, as we've called it, tra Trash Compactor, and that I. Uh, and that I, it's quickly become, I'm glad I can inspire something that I, I've said to you off, offline is that it's become quickly my favorite podcast thing to listen to, you listen to, because you've been kind enough to share the, um, the, the early cuts or the, you know, the early editions of the podcast before they drop. So um, I'm very happy for you. And um, I look forward to all the success that Trash uh, Compactor will have. Oh, and once again, I am, I'm humbled that you would say that, but I'm, I'm very happy that it seems to be uh, resonating with its intended audience. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so once again, Josh, thank you for being here. You will be back again. Um, and, uh, and in case you guys don't know, Josh also is on the reaction show for, for Picard and Star Trek on, on this podcast network. So, um, you can listen to him um, a lot this week. Yeah, um, not this not, episode, not, his, not his first rodeo. This, is, this, <laughs> not his first this rodeo. episode, yeah, the this episode, his, the launch of his podcast, and I think this week because we're recording this in advance is also the wrap up episode of Picard. Oh, jeez. So, so <laughs> oh, Josh, can we see? I'm and, sorry, and, everybody. Very big I'm, play, Josh. It's like I'm sorry, everybody. Josh. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, so sorry, everyone. I don't mean to subject you to uh, my <laughs> stylings <laughs> this much. <laughs> Uh, I know you're being humble, but everything that you say is, is very insightful and stuff. I mean, you've blown Joe's mind many times on this episode. So, <laughs> definitely uh, did, man. <laughs> so, oh, I'm really excited it. for when uh, when Joe, James, and I go on vacation and Josh Josh takes over the podcast for That's a right. There you go. <laughs> hey, I know how to work a register. You can leave me minding the store. And is it, uh, this is what I'm saying. I'll be mostly uh, assured that, uh, that everything will be where you left it. <laughs> the store will still be here when we get back. <laughs> um, toys so back in the toy I box. assure you we are open. Yes. <laughs> so Josh, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Uh, Joe, always thank you for being here with your insight. And I, I especially appreciate your, your insight coming into this fresh for today's discussion. So thank you. This is great, James. Thanks. Thanks, Josh. 
And, uh, and Chris, as always, thank you for being the impetus for this original conversation and leading basically the, the, this talk to the podcast that we are now in. So thank you so much. That has been my great honor. Thanks again, Chris. And uh, thank you all for listening to this episode. If you've enjoyed everything you've heard or have thoughts and comments of your own about what we discussed today, you can uh, leave comments on the Facebook group, Secret Origins and Link Condition. If uh, you want to uh, email us your thoughts uh, that we could share or discuss, uh, secretoriginsmc at gmail.com. We thank you as always for listening, and we will talk to you next time. Bye.